Hello. Welcome to Making Sense of It. This is a program, this, this program is our gift to you from the Glasser Institute for Choice Theory. Each week we have someone go into depth of Dr. William Glasser's concepts of reality therapy, choice theory, or lead management to help us see how it works in their life to amazing results and how you make it, take it, and put it into your life. And we are very blessed today as our guest is Carlene Glasser, who is Dr. Glasser's widow. And she gave us just a week ago or a month ago back in, in March about what love is. And if you missed that one, I would encourage you to go back on the Glasser website and, and look at it. It was very informative and quite touching. So uh, Carlene, welcome again today. Thank you. Thank you. You're going to be sharing with us about our total behavior car. Exactly. Yes. Yes. And I'll just turn it over to you. Okay. Well, I guess if you look at all of the body of work of William Glasser, and there's so much to cover with choice theory and the, the chart and reality therapy, perhaps the most unique to him and creative concept that he developed was the concept of total behavior. It's very, it's, it's different from any other psychologist or psychiatrist uh, explanation of, be, of human behavior. And uh, he developed these ideas when he was doing therapy and he realized that uh, people wanted to talk about how bad they felt. You know, they talk, wanted to talk about their feelings, you know, and their, and their physical uh, complaints like symptoms and things like that. And he says, you know, he would listen to them, but he felt that in order to really help them, he had to get them to focus on something else. And that would be the choices they're making of their of behavior, like what they're thinking to some degree, and mostly how they're acting, what they're doing, how they're behaving in the world. And uh, so he developed the idea of the concept of total behavior. Now, going back to choice theory, in the context of choice theory, there are four actual parts of choice theory that he explains, and we call them components, I guess. The first uh, part of choice theory that, that we help people to understand is that they have basic needs that are unique to all of us. They're, they're not unique to individuals, they're universal needs. So they're love and belonging, power, freedom, and fun. And Mona, if you want to point to the brain on the chart, I'll, I'll indicate on the chart where you can find these concepts. So the, the, the first uh, component of choice theory is the basic needs. And uh, they're listed, love and belonging, power, freedom, fun, and survival. And the, the second component of, of choice theory is the quality world. He explains that we all individually have pictures of what we what we need what we want to have in the in the real world and they're usually based on the on the basic needs you know so we all have pictures in that correspond with the, our internal driving basic needs but we make pictures in our head and we call he called that the quality world and the the third concept that he uh, developed and, and which is in, in choice theory, is the idea of total behavior. And if you pay, point to that, the car up in the left-hand corner, the car and, and the uh, organized behaviors and uh, uh, the, the behavioral system in, in, in general is, is uh, the third component of choice theory. And the fourth component of choice theory, which I'll touch on today with the the behavioral car is the idea of creativity. He thought that creativity should be a part of the choice theory concept because where we become creative is when we make a plan to solve our problems in the real world. So creativity happens in the internal world and it happens in the external world, in the real world. But uh, let's, let's go on to talk about uh, total behavior now. When I was going through my training in reality therapy and choice theory, 
I got certified in 1986. I started the training in 1983, but I was a school teacher. And so I was, I had to do my, my training in the summers. And uh, I had a wonderful experience learning about choice theory because that about that time, the chart had been developed and it was just then being introduced to students who were, who were learning the choice theory and reality therapy to become reality therapy certified. And at the end of the training, after you do basic practicums and, and uh, advanced week and advanced practicums, you go on to take an, a, a certification week. Well, my certification week occurred in Seattle, Washington, and I'll never forget it. It was one of the most exciting and wonderful experiences of my life. And I wanted to explain the chart, but I, I didn't, I couldn't remember all of it just off the top of my head. And so I, I made a little cheat sheet and this is the cheat sheet that I made. Oh, this, can you see that? Yeah. It's a star and I, whoops, <laughs> one, of, one of the wheels, it's, it's old. So parts are falling off. This part is gonna fall off next. But anyway, this is good that this fell, fell off. I'll, I'll use this later. But this is total, all the feelings. There's feeling wheel and there's the acting wheel. And I'll get this in the camera. The, the acting and, and feeling and physiology. And so I put all the parts of the chart on the car. Uh, the sensory system or camera is the first information we get. That's the, the sensory system and on the chart. It's that gray area. If you point to the chart the, right after the real world, there, that no, the real world, the blue. Okay, yeah, here's the real world. Sensory, the sensory system is right there, that's it. And then there's the total knowledge filter and then there's the valuing filter. And I had all these written on my, on my, can you see these written? Are these, these look like a yes, mirror? Very clear. You yeah. See okay, so, so that's how I remembered the chart. I had the industrial arts teacher at the high school where I was the art teacher. <laughs> I drew a picture of this and he took wood from the wood shop and he made this for me. And wow. I brought this in my suitcase to Seattle to explain total behavior. And the quality world is the internal pictures of once the little person that's behind the wheel is, is happily driving his behavior car and uh, the behavioral system, organized behavior and creative behavior is, is on the back. Follows behind. Yeah, follows behind the car and and so uh, this was my total behavior car that I, I explained the whole chart of choice theory, the whole concept of choice theory using the car, which I don't know that I could even do that anymore today. I had it in my mind that this was a, the way to, to do it. Um, so that's, that's what I did for my, to learn how to t teach the chart, but let's go back to looking at the, the total behavior. There are, he represents total behavior as wheels on a car. And when I do training, I, t I give my, my, my students that I'm training and the, in the high school that I, where I worked in the elementary school where I counseled, I use the car extensively to talk about behavior because the front wheels are the only wheels that you can control. That's feeling, I mean, that's thinking and acting. So you can control to some degree your thinking, but mostly you can control your acting or do, doing, but combined it's what you do. You can't control completely directly your feelings and your physiology. Now the feelings are both emotional feelings like anger, anxiety, um, anxiety, as Bill would say, angering, depressing, all of those emotional kinds of feelings. That's one of the wheels. But there are also physical feelings like symptoms like headaches and stomach aches and uh, blood pressure going up and, and all kinds of things that people suffer 
the coming into counseling, they'll usually back into the session, displaying all these back wheel feelings of emotions, and they want to talk about their how bad they feel, and they want to talk about how much pain they're in, and and all of those things. And that's very necessary that they have an opportunity to do that. But if that's all you do in counseling, Dr. Glasser believed that's really cheating the, the client out of what the benefits of getting a counselor who can help them look at what they're doing in their life, in their everyday life. What they're choosing to do is, is another concept that, that he generally would take a little bit of a gentle nudge into that concept of these are, these are behaviors you're choosing. Because nobody wants to say I'm choosing to feel miserable. But you may not be choosing to feel miserable, but you may be choosing behaviors that result in you feeling miserable. And so if you can get some control over your front wheels, your acting and your thinking, what you're thinking about, what you're telling yourself about other people, what you're telling yourself about yourself, how you think about the world in general. And, and also just thinking about what you could do to, to create, cre create a new plan or a way to do something differently. So that's what he got people to focus on by asking them questions about what they're doing and, and what they're thinking about. And once people would understand that they're, what they're actually doing is causing them to be in a position where they, they have these negative feelings, pain and both physical and, and mental pain. And so the, the idea then being, once they change what they're doing in the real world, when they go out of the counseling session and actually start to live their lives, if they can take these, this information and these tools into their everyday life and, and actually change some things in the way they're relating to people, their relationships improve, when they learn how learn choice theory and the fact that you can only control yourself, you can't control other people. It's amazing how once people begin to, to behave in, in their front wheels, we call it, the thinking and acting, the back wheels follow right along. And that's kind of what happens in a front wheel drive car. When your front wheels go in any direction, you're steering your your car in the direction and your front wheels are taking you there. You're acting and you're thinking, but the back wheels have to come along. So if you're driving your car and choosing behaviors and thinking and acting in ways that are, are not working and that are destroying your relationships, for instance, or, or keeping you in a neg negative behavior like addiction that is not negative to you because you have it in your quality world, but to everyone else, you know, it, it, you're seeing how they, addicts begin to see how they're destroying their own lives. And once they do that, they can make a choice to do something else like abstain, go to AA, you know, go through a treatment program, change their life, change what they're doing. And the feelings and physiological uh, symptoms that you have the, the physical feelings and then the emotion, emotional feelings follow right along and you feel better. So people always would tell Dr. Glasser that his counseling worked for them because they could see themselves not only changing their behavior, but learning a new way to live their lives after therapy. And what we want to do is with, with counseling, with choice theory and reality therapy, is keep, give people tools that they can apply in their lives for the rest of their lives. And they may just need a, a refresher course once in a while. And people do that. They'll come to meetings or they'll, they'll uh, attend training sessions or they'll go back into therapy for a short while just to get a kind of a booster shot in, uh, in the choice theory ideas so that they can continue to apply them to their lives. Because once you start living your life according to choice theory and <clears throat> you get in your behavioral wheels that, that are productive, the wheels that you can control, the actual things that you can control are you, you, what the choices that you make in thinking and in acting. And that put together, that's you're choosing what you do 
in life. And when you choose behaviors that, that are fulfilling and um, bring you closer together to people and not drive you further apart, you're gonna be happier. And so the back wheels be, or ha become happy wheels then. They aren't just feelings and physiology, they're, they're happy wheels. That's, uh, that's what I like to call them. And that's what, when I was an elementary uh, school counselor, I really enjoyed teaching uh, choice theory to children. And so I developed a, a few activities and things that I would do with the children. And I put them all together in a, in a booklet, a, a workbook actually, it's called My Quality World Workbook. And teachers have been using that for the past 20 years because I was a, an elementary school counselor even way back when. <laughs> I don't even want to remember how many years ago, but teachers all over the world have, uh, in different languages, have translated the My Quality World workbook that I wrote that back then to help my students. They've translated it into their languages and, and, uh, and any place that Bill and I would travel to, like we were in Slovenia and Croatia, I saw my workbook pictures of the little heart and the star and the butterflies are free and, and a smiley face and pictures that the students had drawn and stories they had written hanging up on the walls of the classrooms that we visited in, in Croatia and Slovenia. And to see it in, in when people would pub publish the book in a foreign language, they would send me a copy of it. And I, I have several uh, copies of one, one in Hebrew and they're in French and Russian and Korean and I think there's a Spanish one and and uh, of course Croatian and I mean a lot of languages they've translated this book into because it's a universal concept that anyone can relate to no matter what culture they come from what what uh, religion they belong to or what uh, language they speak or any any differences choice theory fits in because it's, it explains human behavior and total behavior being one of, one of Dr. Glasser's most creative, I believe, concepts really helps people sort these ideas out for themselves. Because you can always think of the wheels of the car because it's something visual, it's something tactile. You can hold on to it. You can put a little car on your desk or in your, in your house and you, when you're out of sorts, look at the wheels and say, what am, I, what am I thinking right now? How am I acting? And what am I feeling right now? And is, is what I'm doing helping me or hurting me? Is it helping me feel better and get into happiness wheels? Or is it hurting me and keeping me from getting happy again and getting me stuck? Bill would use the analogy of back wheels would get stuck in the sand. Like when you're, when you're back into here in California, it's the sand that you get stuck in at the ocean if you back your car into it. In, but in, in the, the back east where I come from, it's the snow. Have you ever been snuck, stuck, your back wheel stuck in a snow bank? And they go, and people live their lives that way with their back wheels stuck in that, in that miserable behavior because they, they haven't learned to cha change what they're thinking and how they're acting. And so one of the activities that I would do with groups that I trained and with the students, the children that I uh, had, I would give them each a wheel. Well, and everybody would come up. I have, I put people into groups of, of four or five or even six people in a group. The, the, each of the four would get, one would get a feeling wheel one would get a thinking wheel, one would get an acting wheel, and one would get a physiology wheel. So they, they knew who they were, they knew which wheel they belonged to. And then I would tell them a story, or I would ask them to make up a story where their scales are way out of balance. And you can show the ballot out of balance scales on the, on the chart. That's when a picture in your quality world does not match a picture that you're seeing in the real world. So you're perceiving something in the blue section in the real world and that information that comes in 
goes straight through the knowledge filter and, and valuing filter and the perceptual system. And you, if it has a red signal, a red perception, that means it's very painful. And so it's not a match. It, it does, the real world does not match the quality world. And that is a story. People have stories like that. I had a story like that a year ago. At three o'clock in the morning, my telephone rang. And I thought, who is that? And I, I didn't want to pick it up at first because I thought, I, I don't want to talk to anybody at three o'clock in the morning. It's got to be a robocall or something. And, but I thought, well, I don't know, maybe it's some problem at, in Cincinnati. You know, I, my sister might be sick or something. I don't know what I, you, you imagine things. You tell yourself different things when you don't know what, what's happening. I picked up the phone and they said, uh, you must evacuate right now. There's forest fire in your in your neighborhood on your street, and the firemen were out there and they were knocking on doors. And so I had to get up at three o'clock in the morning. And oh my gosh, what do I bring? I, I've got to bring my medicine. I've got to. Bring, so I'm I'm thinking, I've got to get bring something to wear. I've got to get dressed. I've I've got to do. Maybe I should bring some important papers. And, so I was scrambling and running around because I wasn't prepared for this. <clears throat> but we evacuated and luckily for us, the, the fire didn't burn our house down. <clears throat> it came close, but it, we, our house wasn't burned down. But uh, we, we got to move back in about a week later. But for that week that we were out, we had to find a place to live, a, a hotel to stay in. And, and uh, I didn't have to bring enough clothes. So we went to Target and bought crazy looking pajamas and things like that, that anything that we could, would fit us that we could wear. I say we, because my daughter, <clears throat> that what complicated it a little bit, my story is that my daughter, her husband and her two children, the boy is 10 and the girl is eight and their, their puppy dog and their little kitten, which we just acquired, were all part of the mix. We had to we had all evacuated. So we all, all got in the big big SUV that my son-in-law has for us. And we made sure we had the pets. And But we had to find a hotel to stay in that would take pets because we, you know, not all hotels will do that. So, so anyway, we had lots of out of balance scale situations and, and times when we just felt lucky to be alive. And so if I had, if I would tell that story to you as a group of four people and gave each of you a wheel and one wheel said physiology, another wheel said, says feelings, and another person's wheel would say acting and the other person's wheel would be thinking. Now, when I told the story, you could hear all of those things happening to me. And I would also have them make up their own story or tell a story that really happened to them that was a, a trauma or an unhappy situation. And what I would ask each one is I say, now, if you were going through this situation right this minute, feeling wheel, what would you be feeling? And so the feeling wheel would get to talk and actually express the feelings that they that they would possibly be feeling during this happening when this was occurring. And then we would all listen to the young know, and I'd write some of the feelings down that they would feel. Then I would hand point to the person that has the physiology wheel. What was your physiology? What were your physical symptoms when, when that this occurred, when this uh, the scenario was happening? Well, the feelings wheel or the physiology wheel would say, oh, my heart was pounding, which was true, my heart was pounding. I was, oh, I was breathing, trying to get my breath and breathing, you know, really quickly. And, and uh, I, I was frightened. I felt, well, that was what the feeling was, but my physiology, you know, there are lots of physiology and, you know, maybe a pain in my head or a, a sick feeling in my stomach, which I had because I thought, oh my gosh, if this house burns down, it's all my memories, my pictures, I can't get everything. You know, it's, it's just it's a million things go through your mind, but your physiology is behaving at the same time. All of these things are happening, happening simultaneously. The feelings, 
the feeling wheel just expressed how, they, how, she, how the feeling wheel was feeling. The physiology was happening. We just expressed that. Then I would point to the thinking wheel. And I'd say, what were you thinking? Well, I was thinking I got to get out of here. I've got to, I've got to collect what I can collect, but I got to, I was even thinking, um, maybe I won't go at all. Maybe I'll just sit here and keep, keep a watch over my stuff because I don't, you know, you get to really get attached to your stuff and you want to, you know, a, a person who doesn't know choice theory, of course, would possibly say something like that. There are people who won't leave their house when the fire is coming down the road. They, they choose not to go. And, and the firemen, you know, try to force them to go, but uh, sometimes they're successful, sometimes they're not. But anyways, we would listen to what the thinking wheel had to say. And, and then usually that was a lot of, of, of thoughts going through their minds. And the physiology wheel, we'd think about, ask what the physiology, and then, then we say, okay, now let's go to the acting wheel. What did you actually do? Well, in my story, I told you what I did. I got up, I got dressed, I got my stuff that I could get a hold of that was important to me, my medications, my papers, you know, my, my purse, my money, the things that I... I will, I'm sorry about that. I should have turned my phone off. Sorry. Um, I will uh, go back to, let's see, where were we? We were at the- What you actually wheel. did. What actually did. The acting wheel then describes what they actually did in that situation. And sometimes people will describe ineffective behaviors. And then we, then we get into a discussion of, okay, this is what you were feeling. This is your physiology. This is what you were thinking. This is what, how you acted. What was that effective behavior? Did that get you safe? The survival need met? Did it get your need for love and belonging met? Did it get your need for power met? Did it get, you know, did it get your needs met? Did it get, was, was that in your quality world? No, being evacuated from my house was certainly not in my quality world. My skills were totally out of balance, but what is in your quality world? Well, I wanna stay alive. I want my kids to stay alive. I want the pets to stay alive, even though they're a pain in the butt, you know, <laughs> to have to drag everywhere and figure out how to find a hotel and all that. But we love those little pets, this little, little cat and little dog and, and the children love them. And, they were the, and then we had to deal with the kids crying and upset. And, and so there were lots of things going on. And so the wheels of the car, when you know to get into those front wheels as soon as you can. That's how you're going to survive. That's how it's going to work for you. Because you have to think of something to do. And you have to act on it. And that, that making that plan is crucial in a moment of crisis like that. And in moments of just not so much crisis, but just unhappiness. And, uh, you know, scales out of balance situations. I have heard so many different stories doing this activity with people. Uh, it's amazing how they remember some of the, 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 the things they had to go through. And many of them would say, after we did this activity, oh my gosh, this happened to me. But if I'd have known choice theory at the time, I, I would have handled that a lot better. And so we move this, the scenario that we're talking about with this particular group of four people to the next stage, if you had it to do over, what would you, how would you act? What would, you, what would your thinking be first? What would you think of doing? And what, how would you act and what would you do? And then if you did those things to the best of your ability, how do you think you would feel then? And then they go, aha, I can affect my blood pressure. I can affect my heart rate. I can affect my, my terror, my anxiety. I, I can't change them directly, but indirectly by changing my acting and thinking, I can change my behavior, my, 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 the outcome, my feelings and my physiology. I can, I can help them to, to, to move me to a better place. And so that was one activity I did with them and, and uh, they seemed to 
enjoy that. And, and uh, I've done it with all age groups, children as young as first and second graders, college students, uh, adults, senior citizens. I've done the activity with so many different people of different uh, belief systems. And it's amazing how people begin to see through total behavior, how similar we are with one another. And um, another concept that Bill stressed, especially towards the end of his life, he was stressing the, the idea of creativity and being creative as a counselor, being creative as a human being and trying to figure out ways to make your life better. And, and he also applied creativity, the concept of creativity to the total behavior components. He said, people get really creative with their feelings. You know, they can, you can get, have some really bizarre and unusual feelings of anxiety or terror, or, or you might even hear voices or see things. And, and, and you, you can't explain why this is happening. And it's your, create, your creative system offers you sometimes the most bizarre things. And if you accept them, that becomes a, a, a part, a component of your total behavior. And it can affect all four wheels of your total behavior. And sometimes people uh, get real creative in their physiology. And he equated a, a lot of the psychosomatic illnesses that people develop to the, the out, of, out of control creative system, the creativity that creates physical ailments when there's no pathology to, to substantiate why this person is having these symptoms. And so, you know, the, the uh, head pain in the head or the pain in the stomach or your back pain or whatever pain you have, it may be something physiological. You should have it checked out. You should always figure, try to get medical attention and see if they're get an MRI or whatever you have to do to figure out what's causing this. But if they, if doctors can find no pathology for the, for the physical symptoms, then maybe looking into what your front wheels are doing, your acting and your thinking and how, how your behavior is in, in the real world and your relationships are working for you. And if there's something that is amiss there and you can self-evaluate and figure out what you have you've been doing that isn't working. That's that's a can be a, a real help in the physiological uh, psychosomatic ailments that people experience. And people are uh, always creative in their thoughts. I mean, not just writers and artists and actors, and they're all very creative in their thinking, but. Ordinary people, everybody has a creative system and that creative system is always working. So if you have a, a situation, I know I've, I've had this, where someone has said something to you and, and it, it, you know, it kind of took you aback and you didn't know quite what to say in, in, as a retort. And you go to bed that night and you forget about it. But the next morning you wake up and you think, ah, that's what I should have said to that person. And that's that creative system working. It even works when you're asleep. So often you wake up in the morning with a solution to a problem that your creative system has been working on all night while you were sleeping. And so your thinking is, is very much wrapped up in your creative process and your creative, uh, your ability to create new ideas. And of course, acting, there are creative uh, behaviors and actions that you, you can take or have been maybe taking, uh, and you think it, it's working for you, like criticizing, blaming, and complaining about your wife or your husband. And then you wonder why they're not happy with you. Well, that was a part of your creative system offering you uh, solutions to a, an out of balance scale situation that you have in a relationship. And your creative system says, well, why don't you criticize the person? Maybe. Maybe that'll straighten them out. Or well, maybe if you, well, it's, it's their fault. Just tell them, you know, this is all your fault. 
you know, or you might want to withdraw from them and not talk to them for a week, or, uh, you know, you might want to uh, only give them attention or, or affection if, you know, they behave in a certain way, you know, and, and so be, all the deadly habits that we study are very creative in getting in external control behaviors. And, and we think that it's gonna get us what we want when actually the very opposite ha occurs. We, we don't get what we want. And until we start using choice theory with people by you know, supporting, encouraging, listening, accepting, trusting, respecting, negotiating differences, they're all the behaviors that, that we can creatively use to, to make a relationship much happier. So total behavior is very effective in teaching for counseling purposes, in teaching students in, in, for educational purposes, for any time you want to explain why things are happening. Think of total behavior and all the four components of to, total behavior and, and how, how your life is really affected by the choices that you make and how you, you know, in that part of the chart where it's, it says, uh, I've got a chart right here, behavioral system. We have organized behaviors and creative behaviors. You can point to it on your chart uh, right there. Mm -hmm. Well, sometimes the organized behaviors we, we use, we use them all the time, repetitively. Whenever anything happens that we don't like, we choose to depress, or we choose to anger, or we choose to blame somebody else. That's an organized behavior for us. And in order to get break that cycle, we've got to become creative and create a different kind of behavior that's going to more effectively bring us closer to the people that we want to be close to and not drive us further apart. And so that's what I have to say about total behavior. Well, all right. <laughs> that was absolutely fantastic. And you have such a beautiful way of expressing what you're saying that I was beginning to see all kinds of pictures. <laughs> that, yeah, I could just see the, the system working internally. How that whenever you get that clock, that alarm, you know, at three o'clock in the morning, and it is frightening and it is sad and you can begin to see how that those feelings can really take over but you have to move to the front wheels yeah. the so, staying in those back wheel feelings would not be helpful i could have collapsed from my from my blood pressure going up and my heart rate going up but i i took a deep breath and several breathing uh, relaxation breaths and thought to myself, now, Carlene, think of what to do now in this situation. You're going to, you want to survive. Let's think of what you need to do. First of all, stay calm. And that's what I did. And uh, thank goodness for William Glasser, my dear, sweet husband of 20 years. And he taught me all these behaviors. And uh, I'll, I'll never, ever lose them. I mean, they're with me forever. You know, you can't get rid of them. Once you learn choice theory, some people complain because they've learned choice theory, because then they say, now I know what I'm doing wrong. <laughs> now I know what I should be doing to be happy. And I have no one to blame but myself. But uh, anyway, that that's, uh, I, I'm, I'm, I was, as many people, as, as a matter of fact, Al, Albert Ellis was very impressed with Bill's concept of total behavior because he focused on the rational and, and emotive thinking. And he was more focused on the irrational thoughts that people have. And uh, he thought that Glasser's work on total behavior was quite unique and, and, and quite value, valuable. And uh, Bill was very happy about that. Yeah. And I'm very happy, all of us that are hearing and know about this later, watch this, will be very happy that even though all of that happened to you, you turned those back wheels into happy wheels. Yep, eventually we got back in our house and the cats were safe and the dog was safe and more importantly, the grandchildren were safe and 
they were a bit crabby and disgruntled, but <laughs> but who wouldn't be, you know, when you're ripped out of your house? And the, the things that people have been putting up with and having to deal with this past year with the pandemic, I mean, you really, boy, choice theory came in handy for me because I was, I've been cooped up in my house for, for a year without being able to go anywhere or do anything. And now finally, you know, I've got my, my inoculations, my vaccinations, and and uh, I'm good to go. And so things, you know, just you know, like Bill always said to me, when things happen that kind of are not too great, he would say, trust choice theory, it works. Very simple, simple idea. Trust the theory, it works. Trust the theory. Don't, don't give up on choice theory. Think about it, focus on that and, and that the answers are all there. The answers are in choice theory. And that chart is amazing. Yes. It, 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 it just is amazing. And even though in humility, all of his life, he did uh, stress it as a theory. It is a theory that becomes fact as you begin to put it into use. So thank you very, very much for being with us. And we're going to stop the recording. You're welcome.